Hey everybody, welcome back to Napkin Physics. Just a quick overview of, of what this is. I am a flight medic and I like to talk about physics and microbiology and chemistry and I like to talk about it with my EMS friends and my paramedics and commonly we talk about it at a coffee shop and they have napkins there. And so whenever one of us don't understand uh, some aspect that we're talking about, we usually draw it on a napkin. So what I'm attempting to do in this segment or with this series of videos is give people a more in-depth look at how physics can affect your daily practice for EMS and pre-hospital professionals and basically anyone who wants to learn a little bit of physics and associate it with medicine. So that's what this is. Uh, just a quick little business. Uh, it is sponsored by EM Transport Radio, the podcast, and the f guys over at Squad 81. And this is going to be part two of our Poussey's Equation video series. So if you guys have seen the first one, you'll remember that we are equating for F. We're trying to solve F. And what is F? F is flow, or sometimes a representative is Q, through a cylindrical tube. And uh, it's the exponents are going to be delta P, or change in pressure, times pi, which is a constant, times radius to the power of 4, divided by 8, divided by the viscosity of the fluid going through the cylindrical device, and then the length of the tube, the length of whatever you're uh, attempting to push the fluid through. Now, we're going to do a little lab and thought experiment of how we're going to tie this in to uh, our practice and to practice in the pre-hospital profession. So this is actually a lab that I did at one of my trauma lectures that went over very well. So these are the this is the equipment that you're going to need or just to think about. So 20, a 22, a 24, an 18, a 16, and a 14 gauge catheter, a one liter bag of normal saline for each, a 10 drop set for each of those three pressure bags, six basins because we don't want to make a mess, and a timer. So here is the setup. You give a, at least six students different size catheters. You give them each a liter bag of normal saline. You uh, have them set up with a 10 drop set and a different size catheter and a basin. And what we're going to actually measure is how long it takes for each of these catheters to empty this bag. So let's go back to that equation because we want to find out what we're solving for, right? So remember, it's going to be delta P times pi times radius of a catheter to the fourth power over uh, 8, viscosity of your fluid, and the length of your catheter. And that's all going to equal F, or the flow, or how fast this fluid is going to flow through this entire uh, system. So here's what you do. Give everybody a different catheter and time it. It's a relatively simple experiment, but what does this enable us to do? Well, we could get rid of our two constants right here, right? We could also get rid of this, and we can make this a constant because our viscosity is going to be the same throughout everybody's bag. And also what we could do is get rid of L because all of our catheters are going to be the same size. So now what are we looking at? We're looking at the relationship between pressure and size of a catheter with fluid administration. And you guys should be thinking to yourselves intuitively, uh, which set of these, the 20 through the, the 20 through the 24, or the 14 through the 18 size catheters are going to be faster? Well, you probably guessed right, these are gonna be faster, but what if I threw in a little caveat? What if I put this in a pressurized system? Commonly on the flight units, we have pressure bags that we can actually uh, set it to like roughly 300 millimeters of mercury and increase the pressure within all these. Now, that will increase the flow, but will it increase the flow as much as the radius of a catheter? Well. You know, it doesn't. In fact, we did this experiment and we increased the pressure and at a constant rate for all these and it had a very minimal effect because this again is to the is to the power of four. So with every increase, we increase that to the power. It's an incredible, incredible uh, uh, increase in the flow rate with the uh, uh, increase in the radius of a catheter. Pretty cool, huh? But it poses this question, does size matter? Well, it partially does. And here's why. Let, let's look at two scenarios, a, tra a trauma scenario and a medication scenario. So 
in the trauma scenario, we have a patient who's exsanguinating. They, they are bleeding out like crazy. And you arrive on scene and you drop some big old, you know, 18, 14 gauges because that is what you've been taught to do. But the question poses, do they need all that NS? Do they need all that fluid? And, and, and frankly, no, they don't need NS. What they do need, though, is blood. They need blood. So that's why we give these large bore catheters, because with the rapid fluid administration that they're going to get, it's, it's, it's not going to pose uh, any benefit. What they are actually going to need is blood and FFP, fresh frozen plasma. And they get these at the level one trauma hospitals they go to with pressure infusers. And those pressure infusers work best with large bore catheters. We don't need to be bolusing uh, our trauma patients with extraneous amounts of fluid and making, t essentially turning them into Kool-Aid. Don't be afraid to use the Trendelenburg and use uh, 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 permissive hypotension and just don't over fluid admi administrate your patients. I'm going to give you guys uh, some articles at the end of this for you guys to sort of peruse and get to understand why you don't need to do that. So. Uh, here is another question that was actually posed by two uh, incredibly smart uh, practitioners out there in the field, uh, and they are going to be Dorothy Benton, a paramedic, and uh, Josh Baca, an EMT. They both comment or uh, contacted me with the same question. If we look at D5W, right, D5W in comparison to D50, why uh, why do I need to push D50 through this large bore catheter? Well, the reason is is because D50 has a, an extraneously large viscosity. Okay, D5W, it's not that viscous. And why is it that way? Well, because each of these have different concentrations of dextrose within them. Obviously, D50 has a much more concentration of those molecules, making that fluid much more viscous and thus lowering the flow as we increase viscosity. So what I actually like to do is I take my D50 and I put it in a one liter bag of NS, one liter of NS, dyslexia, of NS. And so what does that do? Well, that actually lowers the viscosity. That lowers the viscosity. It's a more controlled rate and it increases the flow. So uh, be sure and check with your medical directors and see if they like that. I've talked to uh, um, uh, some medic some doctors and they, they seem to don't mind that flu right of fluid and um, dextrose uh, medication administration. So these are two ideals that are a trauma scenario and a medication scenario on how Pousset's equation can um, affect your patient. Another thing on size, a lot of people say go big or go home, but one thing that needs to be important is that you need to know what you're doing. I don't want you guys fishing around inside a vasculature for a large catheter just because you think it's cool. Have a reason for that large vasculature for that large cat catheter in that vasculature. Okay, so just a little bit of uh, research I want you guys to do. Go to the Ultrasound Podcast. They have this great uh, uh, lesson on integrated ultrasound approach to fluid responsiveness. That's just amazing. And if you go to the MCRIT blog or podcast and just type in fluid administration, it will give you a barrage and a gauntlet of uh, amazing amazing information on the most up-to-date care on fluid administration and fluid responsiveness. So be sure and check those out, okay? And be sure and reach us at emtransportradio at yahoo.com, our website emtransportradio.squarespace.com, on the Twitters at emtransport81, at Google+, Plus. just type in my name, Charlie Alvarenga. And if you want to check out some cool pictures on Instagram uh, of what we're doing, Papa Bear Medic is the handle. Be sure and give us questions and, and comments and whatever you guys feel like talking to us about because we do take requests. And in fact, our next request is over vent circuits and ventilator uh, physics that was actually posed to us by a, a person on Reddit. So be sure and stand by for the next one. Thank you so very much. And remember that every patient is family. And we'll see you in the next one.